Hi, I'm Katie at Quilt Beginnings in Dublin, Ohio. And today we're gonna to talk about all of the basic embroidery setup and how to embroider on your Bernina machine. This is going to apply to the five, seven, and eight series machines. There are a couple of differences that we're gonna go over in the video, but this is gonna be the first video that you wanna to watch to get you started embroidering. We'll have another one coming out with some of the more advanced plus features on those top of the line machines, but all the techniques and basic, um, the basics really are what we're gonna cover in this video. So the first thing that you wanna think about when you go to embroider is stabilizer and thread. Make sure that you're set up for success. My friend Pam has a wonderful video on stabilizers, but you wanna understand that there are three basic types based on how they come off of the embroidery. So a stabilizer is gonna sit behind your fabric and it's going to really help protect the fabric from shrinking or gathering as you get a lot of thread and stitches onto your material. There's a tear away, there's a cut away, and there's a wash away type of stabilizer. For the basics, we're just gonna talk about tear away. That's really what I'm gonna use 80% of the time if I don't have a super dense design, if I'm doing basic embroidery. Embroidery is so fun because there are so many types of projects you can do. And as you get more into it, you're going to learn what the right techniques are and what the right setup is for those projects at that time. But in this video, we're just gonna go through the basic process so you can learn your machine and get ready to take on those more advanced projects. One thing I do want to mention is Bernina has a wonderful reference book called The Big Book of Embroidery. And that book is gonna help you with those different projects, different techniques, all the ways to set you up for success as you get really into embroidering on your machine. When it comes to thread, just like with stabilizer, it's really going to depend on exactly what type of project you're doing and what results you want. The basic thread that you're going to use for embroidery probably 90% of the time is a 40 weight polyester. We love Isocord and Floriani brands, but any 40 weight polyester is gonna get you really good results. It's a strong thread, it's a nice heavy weight, so you get a good lustrous look when you do your embroidery. And the bobbin, we tend to use a 60 weight thread. It can be either polyester or cotton, and I use white 90% of the time because I'm not going to see the back of my embroidery. The lighter weight thread is gonna help pull the heavier weight thread on top to the back. So you'll get a nice wrap. Like if you think of a satin stitch embroidered letter, you really want the top thread to wrap around to the back. And a 60 weight bobbin thread is going to help you get that. Also to get set up for embroidery, you need to be sure that you have your embroidery foot and your embroidery stitch plate on. The embroidery foot typically is gonna be the number 26 foot. If you're doing couching or something a little bit different, then you would use a different foot. But again, 90% of the time, you'll use your number 26 embroidery foot. The single hole stitch plate is going to make sure that you don't get any flagging or any bunching up underneath your stitch plate. So I use the single hole stitch plate, the zero millimeter. And when we go into the details in this video, I'll show you how to tell the machine that you have that stitch plate on so that when you go back to sewing, you don't break a needle when you go to zigzag but making sure you have that single hole stitch plate on will help support the fabric and make sure that you get beautiful results as you are embroidering. First, let's attach the embroidery module. This is going to be the same way on the seven series and the eight series. I'll show the fives in just a second. Your embroidery module has two plastic black tabs. Those just lift up and slide into the holes. You set the machine down and that module should give a little chirp to let you know that it's on correctly. To take it off, you just reverse it. You lift up and slide straight out. So let's see that one more time. On the sevens and eights, you have two black plastic tabs that are going to slide into these two little holes. You lift up and tilt from the side and just slide straight in. When you set it down, the module should chirp. To take it out, you lift from the side and pull straight out. On the five series, the module is a little different and goes on in a different way. There's a handle on the left, and when you squeeze it, you can slide the module straight in and release. To take it off, it's just that in reverse. You squeeze the handle and pull straight out. In every case, you never want to move the machine and the module together. Even if you're just scooting that machine a little bit, you wanna be sure to take the module off before moving the machine. So for you 880 owners, you will need to thread the bobbin differently for embroidery than you do for regular sewing. 
In order to get ready for embroidery, you open the bobbin door, remove the bobbin, and when you go to put it back in, the first step is exactly the same as before. You want to be sure that it goes into the little slit, pull it to the left and spin it around, but now we want to pull the thread and slide down this metal stitch finger. The thread should catch just a little bit before the far back of this stitch finger. You want the thread to be there where you know that it's in the spring. Once it's there, I can come back and cut it and I know that it's ready for embroidery. To show you the difference, if I just thread it for sewing, I pull it to the right and get it into that slit. When I pull it back, now if I just pull that thread over, it goes all the way to the back of the metal piece. That is not threaded for embroidery. I want to pull it back to the left, down the stitch finger, and you probably at this point just want to take it out and start over for embroidery. So we go through our slit, back to the left, down the metal finger, and make sure that that thread catches before the end of the metal piece. Come back, cut the thread, close the door, and you are ready to start embroidering. So let's talk about hooping fabric. All of your machines come with this hoop, which is the large oval hoop. We always want to just loosen it up as much as possible in order to take the two pieces apart. This bottom piece is what's going to go onto your machine. I start with it flat on the table, and I recognize that on this inside hoop, there's a small triangle down at the bottom. That small triangle lines up with the small triangle on the outer hoop. That's how I know to put it in this way and not upside down, not backwards. I want those two triangles to be lined up. So here I have a piece of a medium weight tearaway stabilizer and a fabric. You can spray base these if you want. Um, some of them have, you know, there are sticky sides, things like that, that you can kind of get things to adhere together. If you just use a piece of medium weight tearaway and a fabric, they'll stay together well enough by the tension of the hoop. I lay the fabric and the stabilizer onto my hoop, and I usually start, I'm gonna turn this around, I usually start at the bottom and sort of get that piece in, and I just work my way around the hoop, pushing it in. I am not the straightest hooper. There are lots of different techniques and ways and tools that you can do this a little bit better, um, but it just takes practice. I'm gonna tighten up my screw and then the last thing that I'm gonna do after I hoop my fabric is I'm gonna go all the way around and just push out so that there is a tiny lip, just a 16th of an inch or so, of stabilizer and fabric. So that way when my hoop is moving around on my machine, I don't have plastic scratching away on my free arm. I have a nice layer of stabilizer and fabric. Just be careful that you don't push that all the way through and then you'll have to re-hoop. There is one other type of hoop that's very easy to use. This one is the maxi hoop. It also comes in a midi size and a jumbo size. What's really nice about these hoops is that to release it, I just press my little buttons, and once I hoop my fabric and stabilizer, I ratchet it and it's done. It's very easy to use these hoops and I highly recommend them if you are gonna be doing a lot of embroidery. Whenever you see this animation, it is a hoop getting put onto the machine, and that's your machine telling you it wants you to put the hoop on. So let's look at how to do that. To put on your embroidery hoop, we're going to pinch these two pieces together. What this does is it enables these two rectangles here to line up with the two metal rectangles on your module. So we pinch those together, we slide our hoop under our foot, so make sure that your presser foot is all the way up, we line up those rectangles, and they should go straight down. Once they're down, you can let go and your hoop is on the machine. The animation will go away from your screen telling you to put that hoop on as soon as it recognizes that the hoop is on correctly. So now that we have our fabric hooped, we have our module on, let's go in and look at some of the embroidery settings that are gonna really make sure that you're set up for success on your machine. One of the first things that we want to do is whenever you first get your embroidery machine, you need to calibrate your large oval hoop. If you ever do an update or you get a new midi hoop, maxi hoop, jumbo hoop, you'll need to calibrate those hoops too. You only really have to do it once until you do a software update, then you might need to do it again. Or if the machine just, 
the needle isn't in the center when you think it should be, you might want to calibrate your hoop. So to do that, we go into settings. On the fives, remember, you have to go to your home button first and then go into your gears. When we go into our gears, there's a hoop icon, which is our embroidery settings. We go into our hoop icon, and the hoop with the crosshair in the middle, that's our calibration. So when we go to calibrate the machine, you want to be sure that you have your clear plastic template that goes with the hoop. This plastic template attaches to the hoop with these two little clips. These clips, you've got quite a few of them that are going to go onto the sides of your template, and they just weave into the plastic, and once they're on, they really can't come off, which is why I can't show you how to put them back on. It just slides in and slots into the hoop um, exactly where, where it should be fitted. The Bernina, you want to be sure, faces up so you can read it, and that's the direction that you put those clips on and put the template onto the hoop. Now we get to calibrate the machine. Our goal is to have our needle hit the very center hole of our template. This is the one time that I really do use my hand wheel on my Bernina. So as I bring my hand wheel, I can see that here my needle is off of the center of that hoop. I want to raise my needle back up before I move the hoop. These arrows are going to move the hoop the opposite direction of what the arrow says. So if I want my hoop to go up, I hit my up arrow and my needle is coming down in the hoop. I check again and that looks like I'm pretty much right in the center. You really only have to do this once, but once you get it in the center using these arrows, raise that needle back up and hit your green check and your hoop is calibrated. Now that we've calibrated our hoop, let's look at a couple of other settings in the embroidery menu. There are a few that I think are very helpful for setting us up for success as we embroider. One of those is my jump stitch menu. Right now, there's three different options in the jump stitch menu. The first one is to make sure that my machine will cut the thread between every color change. We definitely want it to do this, so I leave this one on. The next one is making sure that it's, the machine is actually going to pause to let me cut my thread tail. This can be helpful in edge-to-edge -edge embroidery, um, but I usually will just let the machine keep running and I'll actually pause it myself if and when I need to cut my thread tail. So I usually leave this one off. The next one is my jump stitch length. It defaults to six millimeters, which means your machine will leave any jump stitch that's six millimeters or smaller for you to cut. I would rather have the machine cut those jump stitches for me, so I always change this down to one millimeter, and then it's going to cut all the jump stitches and leave a really clean embroidery underneath. I'm going to use my breadcrumbs to go back into my embroidery menu, and we'll look at another option that's very helpful, what they call the thread away mode. That's this needle with the two little arrows going back and forth. I make sure this is turned on. This is where, when you start to embroider, you will notice when your machine does a, a quick movement of the hoop at the beginning and end of the embroidery. This really pulls the thread tails under and makes sure that they're really neat and you don't have anything that you need to snip and clean up at the end. So I just make sure that one is turned on. Back in my embroidery menu, I also look at the automatic tie-off. That's this needle with the little tie-off icon. This is saying that any designs that you get that are not digitized to already have a tie-on or a tie-off, your machine is smart enough to be able to add those. So this first one is a tie-on at the beginning, the second one is a tie-off at the end. I just make sure these are both turned on. You will never really notice when these settings are taking place, but it's going to ensure that if you get a design that doesn't have this already built in, your embroidery will not come undone. Um, your machine's going to do a tie-on for you. Let's look at a couple of other settings in the embroidery menu. Just as a quick overview, you do have a global tension setting. I really leave that one alone. My Bernina knows the right tension. Um, I might go in and adjust in the actual embroidery edit screen, but here I usually leave it alone. I do have a speedometer. Again, I usually use my um, actual physical knob for speed limit um, on the front of the machine. But if you have small children or anybody who might be playing with that knob on the front of the machine, you can put a speed limit on here. That's just another option for you to play with. You also have 
a measurement tape where you can switch between millimeters and inches. If you use a software program, a lot of them are going to be in millimeters. Millimeter is kind of the universal language in, in many ways for embroidery designs because you can get a lot more precise with it. However, we're in the US here and we often like to think in inches. So you have the freedom to choose what measurement type your machine's going to show you. If I go back into embroidery settings, those are really the main ones that I'm going to use. You do have a fabric thickness option. That's this one here. Typically, your fabric thickness is gonna be about four millimeters. That's the general um, stabilizer and a thin layer of cotton that we typically use. If you're doing a towel or doing something that is a little bit thicker, you can come in here and set it to whatever is more correct for that project. This is the one setting that the machine will actually reset when you turn it off and back on. So when you do a towel, if you turn off your machine, you come back, this setting is going to go back to the default so that you are set up for success on the next sort of regular cotton fabric that you're going to be stitching on. So now let's get started in our embroidery menu. I'm in my home screen now where I can choose between sewing and embroidering. And when I go into embroidery, if I have a five or a seven series machine, it's going to remind me to put my feed dogs down. Very important to have my feed dogs down in embroidery. For you eight series owners, your machine is going to automatically lower the feed dogs for you, so no need to worry there. When I come up into my embroidery menu, the first thing that we're gonna see is some folders. Embroidery really walks through these four steps. The first one here is file selection. I can always get back to here just by touching on the right hand side of the screen. You have two different options for where to get a file. It defaults to inside the machine, but if I have a USB stick that has designs on it, then I can actually go to the USB stick here and I'm going to pull in those designs. Your Bernina's preferred format is a .exp. So if you purchase a design, you're going to get all the different file formats for all the different machines. You would really want to select just the .exp designs, put those onto a USB stick. The USB stick usually should be one gigabyte or smaller. You don't want to use a giant USB stick. The machine just is looking and looking and looking and can't find what it's looking for. So use a one gigabyte stick and put just the .exp files on it, and then your designs would show up here that you could select. For today, we're going to stay in our machine's default designs. We have three folders here. On the 790, 590, and 880, you'll have a fourth folder where you can actually pull in stitches from your sewing side. But the basic folders are your letters, your designs, and your favorites. Let's start by pulling up a design. When I go into my butterfly, I have all my different subfolders that I then can open up and look through. There's lots of built-in designs and lots of fun things that you can explore. If we go into folder two, I can see that there's actually more designs down below and I can scroll to see all the different options. I'll just select one and it's going to open up on my screen. Whenever I open a design, the machine is going to put that design into the hoop that fits it best. I can see what hoop that is just on the left here. It's selected the medium hoop for me, the medium square hoop. You get some additional pieces of information on your screen right when you pull up a design. You see that it takes 18 minutes for this design to stitch out completely. And you also see the dimensions of the design. In this case, it's three inches by 4.1 inches. On the right hand side, in our color menu, you can see that it takes eight different colors of thread. Of course, whatever thread you put on is going to be what it stitches out in. So if you just stitched it out in all one color, it would be all one color, but it's going to have eight different color changes in this case. Now let's look along the left hand side and we see some additional things. My tension setting here is going to apply to just this design. Once again, I really do not change my tension unless there's something very specific that I'm going for. Usually the machine is going to know the right tension to get you the right results. Next, I see a little exclamation point. This is indicating that I need to make sure the machine knows I have my number 26 embroidery foot on. There are a few other feet that I can use. I don't necessarily have to use the 26, but I do want to go into this menu and select which of the optional feet I have. I almost always use the 26 unless I'm doing couching or something else specific. So I'm gonna select the 26 foot and I see that it's indicating, yes, you have it, you're good. 
I also want to remember to tell my machine that I have my single hole stitch plate on. Right now it thinks I have the 9mm. I can stitch out with my 9mm on, however if I'm doing really much embroidery at all, I'm going to get better results by that, using that single hole. And whenever I put that single hole on, I want my machine to remind me not to do a zigzag when I go back to sewing. So I'll just go into that 9mm and tell the machine I have my single hole stitch plate on. I do see that my feed dogs are down because the zigzag is underneath the straight line, so that is good. I'll X out of there, and now we can go into our hoop menu. Like I said before, the medium hoop is the hoop that fits this design best. I will get the best results if I use the hoop that the machine recommends. However, there may be times when I am fitting something, one design in, or I'm adding multiple designs, or I really just want to use a different size hoop for whatever reason, and I have that freedom. When I touch on my hoop menu, I can see every hoop that works with my machine. The one thing to note on the 7 series is that you can actually fit the jumbo hoop, but you will have the same stitch field as the maxi hoop. It's going to tell you down below what your stitch field is for every different hoop. So the biggest hoop that the 770 can use is that maxi hoop. Let's say that we want to select the oval hoop. Now it puts my design into the oval hoop and I can see how it's going to fit and gives me the freedom then to move it around and arrange it exactly where I want it. I have a few other options here. I have different park menus. This is where if I'm going back to my sewing side, I would want to park my embroidery module with that arm all the way to the left before I do that to kind of get it out of my way when I go back to sew. The arm on this machine is already all the way to the left, which is why when I touch this, nothing much happens. If I scroll down, I have a grid option where I can get a crosshair right in the center. I can get a lot of different grids that are going to match the grid on the templates, which can help for positioning, or I can turn it off completely. I have a bullseye option where right now my little bullseye crosshair, that is at the very start point of my design and is indicating to me where the needle is going to go for the very first stitch of the design. If I touch that bullseye, it then moves to the center of the design. So these are just some different options as you get into editing that are going to be helpful. I'll just put it back to the start point. Let's X out of here for the moment. And I'm going to show you, if you just want to get to sewing, exactly how to do that. We're in edit right now. That's this pencil. I can skip all the way down to stitch out. And when I touch my stitch out, my embroidery arm moves over. And now I get this animation once again showing me I need to put my hoop on the machine. Whenever I see that animation, there's nothing wrong. It just means I need to put the hoop on and then it can continue. So I'm going to slide my hoop under the foot and put it on just like we did before. And once it's on now, it's telling me, hey, I have a hoop on and I'm going to be moving around. So make sure nothing's blocking that embroidery arm or getting in the way. When I hit the check mark, I go to the start point of my first color and I can scroll through each color to see what's going to stitch out when. I can just go back up to number one, and as soon as I see a green flashing light on the front of my machine, I am ready to stitch out. So if you just want to get started sewing, that's the way to do it. For others, we might want to do a little bit more editing first. So let's go back up into our edit menu. There are a lot of ways that we can edit a design right on our embroidery screen without needing software, without needing anything else. We can do a lot of customization just within the machine itself. All of this is going to be inside of our information menu. The first thing that we might want to do is move the design around. I have two ways of doing this. I can actually touch the design and move it, and you'll notice that your embroidery hoop and arm are moving with your design on the screen. When that's the case, it kind of helps do exact precise positioning where you can get the design right where you want it, but it might be a little bit of a hassle if you're moving it all over and that design and that hoop are moving with you. So if you wanted to turn that option off, you go back into your hoop menu and this butterfly down at the bottom 
You just turn that off. And now your hoop won't move until you come back and turn this back on. When I X out of that, now I can move my design around with my finger and the arm itself doesn't move and kind of get in my way. The other way that I can move designs, if I touch into my crosshair menu, I see my X and Y coordinates. So I get to remember back to geometry and I can kind of remember back to my X coordinate is my left to right, and my Y is my up and down. So right now, I'm at negative 156. If I just touch that X, now my design is centered left to right. I can use my multifunction knobs. The top one is going to move it left to right, just one little dot at a time. The bottom one is going to move it up and down, one little dot at a time. And that's going to give me a way to very precisely and exactly get that design right where I want it. I can also touch my Y, and that's going to center it up and down, but leave it where I had it left to right. If I get my design way off track, I can just hit this center, and now my design is right in the center at X0 and Y0. So again, these knobs are going to be my friend for just bumping it exactly where I want it once I kind of get it roughly where I want it with moving my design with my finger. So a couple different ways that I can move the design around. I'll go back into my eye and we'll look at some other options. Just like on our sewing side, you can see that anything that's in yellow is something that I have altered. So my design is not directly in the center of my hoop and I can tell that because I can look at it, but I can also see that I've made a change because it's outlined in yellow. Next, let's look at rotation. That's my circle with the arrow on it. I have an option to just rotate it 90 degrees at a time. So that's a very helpful tool. Or if I want to rotate it just a little bit, one degree at a time, I can use my multifunction knobs. Either one of them is going to rotate it around the circle one degree at a time. Just like before, if I want to put it back to normal or back to default, I touch whatever is yellow and it goes right back to the default setting. I go back into my eye and we can look at resizing. This next icon here is my resize icon. It's going to default to a ratio maintaining icon. So that means that as I change one of the dimensions using my multifunction knob, they both change. So it's getting taller and wider at the same time. If I only want it to go one direction at a time, so get really skinny, I just touch the unlink button and then I can change each of these dimensions separately. So I can make it tall and skinny. I can kind of distort it however I want. Again, just like before, I can touch whatever's yellow and put it back to the default. I usually leave that link on because I usually want my design to change proportionally. So let's say that I want to make it a little bit bigger proportionally. That's the way to do it. Something to be careful about when resizing designs is to know that your machine does not recalculate stitches as you resize them. That means that the same number of stitches are going to happen no matter what size you put it at. So you're usually safe to resize plus or minus about 20%, so down to about 80 or up to about 120. If I go any farther than that, I'm going to get very weird, not very pretty results when my stitches are either way too small or way too big. If you wanted to resize beyond that, you really would want to use embroidery software. But as long as I'm within plus or minus 20%, I have total freedom to change my size. Go back into my eye. And the next couple of options are pretty fun, but pretty simple. I just have a mirror image left and right or a mirror image up and down. So this way I can kind of flip my designs around and get them to look exactly how I want them to. Next, I have a duplicate option. So if I wanted two of these paisleys, when I touch duplicate, I have two of these designs right on my screen. Now I kind of see that I have multiple trays here. So whatever one is in color and is highlighted is the design that I'm editing. So right now I'm in tray two. If I wanted to edit the one behind it, I can either touch it with my finger or touch the tray that corresponds with that. So this is tray one, two is the other one. 
Sometimes it's like, okay, I hit the duplicate accidentally. I want to get rid of one of these trays. I only want one paisley. Just hit your little trash can and it's going to ask, are you sure you want to delete it? Yes, I'm sure. Now I'm back to just one. Similarly, if I wanted to delete whatever's on this screen completely, I can just delete this, even though it's my last design. Say, no, I actually, I don't want to delete that. I want to leave this one on the screen. So I hit my red X and it didn't delete. Next, I have a very helpful positioning tool. It's called check. Now check is going to let me check what these four corners of the design are going, where they're going to be. So when I hit this check piece, it's going to take my crosshair, my needle, up to the very top left corner. And my hoop is going to move. And if you don't have your hoop on, you're going to get an animation telling you, you need to put the hoop on because this doesn't work without a hoop. Right now I'm in the top left corner and I can look on my fabric and see exactly where that needle is going to be, exactly where kind of that top left of the design is going to be. I can go to the bottom left, the bottom right, and the top right and get a feel for exactly where my design is going to stitch out. If I'm not happy with that positioning, I have the ability with my multifunction knobs to move it just a little bit, you know, one little, one little bit at a time and kind of get precise with exactly where I want that design to stitch out. If I want my bullseye to go right in the center of the design, so my bullseye is my needle, if I want my needle to go right in the center so I can see where the center is, I just touch that center icon. And then I can, again, go back up to the left, bottom, right, whatever it is, and make sure that I'm happy with where it's going to stitch out. If I X out of here, that's all of the editing that we need to do with this design. A couple of other things I do want to mention. Sometimes we have a design on the screen and we want to add a second element. What we tend to do is go up into our folder and open up a new design. Um, this is one way to basically open a design and erase everything that we just did. So watch what I do. If I touch on that, my Paisley disappears. So if you didn't want that to happen, so say, all right, we, we didn't want the Paisley actually, we want this tree and we want it down here in this bottom half of the, of the design, um, bottom half of the hoop, and maybe I want it centered left to right. So I got it in the bottom half, but I moved it to the left a little bit. I can go into my crosshair, I can touch my X coordinate, and now it's perfectly centered left to right, but is down in the bottom half of that hoop. Now I wanna put something up in the top of this hoop. So when I X out of this area, what I don't want to do is I don't want to go up to this folder. I want to just add a layer, add a tray. And when I touch on that add icon, once again, I'm, I'm back in the folder that I was in. Let's say that I want to go into a different folder. I can just use my breadcrumbs to go back to that design butterfly. I can pick a different folder. Let's say number three and pick any design here. How about this one? Designs always default to coming in in the center of the hoop. But I can see that the, these flowers are in color. I have tray number two highlighted and I have the freedom now to just move and edit this flower separate from the design I already had in the hoop. I can go into my eye, I can rotate. Let's do plus 90 so that it goes along the top. And now I have two designs in the hoop. I can edit each of them individually, or I can select them all together and move them both together. So this bottom tray is always going to be my whole design, everything that I have on the screen. So I just want to be sure that we don't accidentally do all this work. And then when we X out, go in and open up a new design and erase everything that we just did. One thing that I can do is I can save this design. Once I'm really happy with my flowers and my tree and I think that they're right where I want them, I can go into my folder and just like on the sewing side, I can save into my favorites. So that's this arrow going into my hearts folder. It's going to show me a little image of it with the yellow around saying, is this where you want it? And yep, I wanna save that in my heart. And now when I go back to get um, to get designs out, if I go into my heart folder, that's what I'm going to see there. One thing to note, 
is that when I am on each of the individual trays, my icons will indicate the time and the dimensions of that design. So I can look at each one individually, or I can use my down arrow and select everything all together, and I can see this whole design will take 20 minutes and what the total dimensions are. So let's say that I want to pull in a name instead of these flowers. First, let's go select just tray number two. We'll delete these flowers, so I'll go into my eye, and I'll hit the trash can and say, yep, I am sure. But I do want to put some initials. Just like before, if I want to add an element, I touch my plus on the tray, and now it's taking me into my folder. So I can select my letter folder, I can select a font, and I can type whatever initials I want. Just like before, it's gonna bring those designs in right in the center of the hoop, so I can pull them up to the top, I can go into my positioning, I can center them left to right, and then I can resize because I might actually want those to be a lot bigger. So what I said before about the plus and minus 20%, the only exception is with letters. My machine actually has the ability to recalculate how many stitches go into a letter. So I can make these as big or as small as I want, I just have to take one additional step afterwards. So let's make it way bigger. I want these to take up the whole, kind of the whole space. These are my initials, they're gonna be my monogram. They're not really my initials, they're just three random letters, but they look great. But I notice that I have these up to 167%. If I just stitch these out now, I'm gonna get some very weird results. The density is gonna be really, really low. I'm gonna have a lot of white space. The stitches are gonna be too long. It's just not gonna get great results. So the next step I have to do when I go back into my eye is this last icon here, stitch density. What we wanna understand is that if I go up 167% in size, a good kind of rule of thumb starting point is to increase the density by a similar amount. So I can go up to about 167, but in this case, you know, these letters are, are they're a satin stitch. They typically are gonna be a satin stitch where it, um, you know, it just goes left to right along the whole width of that letter, and it still might not get me exactly the results that I'm looking for. So if I'm doing letters and I'm changing them a lot, I usually will do some stitch out practice before I go right onto my project. The other option that I have is this option, where if I turn it on, I can tell the machine to switch from a satin stitch, which again is just one big stitch from left to right of the letter, I can actually switch it to a step stitch. And that's gonna be another kind of fill stitch, but you're gonna get much better results on your letters. It's going to default to a step stitch if any satin is bigger than eight millimeters. And you can play with this if you want it to be a step stitch, you know, as long as it's seven millimeters wide or wider, you can play with that but you're gonna to wanna to play with stitch density and with that step stitch option as you're doing lettering and making them bigger. If we made our letters smaller, we would not need to do the step stitch option because a satin stitch would be sufficient. It can still go left to right over the entire letter but we would want to reduce our density because otherwise you're gonna get these really, really, really tight, tight designs and tight, tight letters. So if we made our letter 60% size, we would start by going down to about 60% density. That's gonna be a good starting point. Like I said, you're gonna to want to do some practice stitch outs before you really do this all the way. So I'm gonna take this all the way up to 160 just as a start. I'm going to turn on my step stitch option, and when I hit the green check, it's going to do some recalculation. And what that means is that now these letters have been re-digitized with those specifications. The main thing to remember is that if you are changing your letters more than 20% up or down, you need to go into your stitch density and adjust it 
to match the similar direction. Do some stitch out trial practice, but you will see the difference when you're sewing it out. Now that I have my hoop with my design, my full design, I've got initials, I've got a design, this is what I'm happy with. When I X out, I can just go down this column and go to my next step, my color menu. My color menu is telling me that I have seven different thread changes. I can use these arrows to go through and scroll and see what exactly is it going to stitch out with each step. So this third step, that's going to be some of these little trunk, some of the light trunk pieces. The fourth step will be the red leaves. The fifth step is the yellow leaves. So I can scroll through and really see and get a feel for what the machine is gonna stitch in what order. The last thing it's going to do is the letters. Your machine defaults to a certain brand of thread. So whatever brand of thread it's showing you is actually the brand and the color number that it's recommending for this design. You have the ability to change what brand it tells you about. If I go into this little recycling icon, I can either select a different color within this brand, or I can select a different brand. And there are many, many brands of thread inside of here. So let's say that we're using Floriani. Once I'm in my Floriani menu, if I touch this thread change icon, it's going to change every color in the design to the corresponding Floriani color. I can go back into my color menu, and now, if that's what I've got in my local quilt store, if that's what I've got in my stash, it gives me different color number recommendations. So 153 for the top one, and it will take two minutes to stitch out. 809 for the second color, and it will take one minute to stitch out. It's going to give me these recommendations. Of course, whatever I put in the machine is what it's actually gonna sew with. So if I put a bright blue for thread number two, it's gonna stitch my trunk in blue. But I can kind of plan it out by going in here first and scrolling to a blue, and then I can see and audition what that's going to look like. Some people really like to audition things first. Some people just wanna speed through this step. It is up to you. You have total flexibility. Once I'm happy with the thread colors, I can go down to stitch out. And just like before, my hoop is gonna move and take my needle to the very first starting stitch of the first design. You might notice that the 51 minutes is a lot longer than what we saw in our edit menu. This has to do with my speed slider. My speed slider on this machine was down about halfway. If I go back into edit and back into stitch out, once I've moved my speed slider to the fastest speed, you'll see that it changed now to 27 minutes. So it really depends on how fast you're running your machine. If I'm doing a standard, not super dense design using 40 weight polyester thread, I usually will have my machine running about full speed. If I'm using metallic thread or doing a really dense design or very small micro letters, things like that, then I might wanna run my machine slower. You will figure this out as you do and practice your embroidery. Either way, once we're started to stitch out, we have a couple of different options just within this menu. The first one here is a basting box. If you're using a towel, for example, and you've got a terry cloth surface, you might want to use a topper to help prevent your stitches from sinking down into that terry cloth. If you use a topper, you would want your machine to baste that down because otherwise it's going to get all jumbled up inside your design. So that's when you would use a basting box. You have two options for basting box. The first one was just around the design. The second one is all the way around the outline of the hoop. If you don't want a basting box, you touch it again and it turns off that option. The next option that I want to be sure I have turned on is my jump stitch option. I definitely want my machine to cut my jump stitches. I don't want to do it. It has that ability. Let's let it do its thing. I can also turn the entire design into a monocolor. So this icon here that goes from red, green, blue to all green, if I touch that icon, it's going to sew everything without stopping for thread changes. 
That can be really, really helpful if I actually want everything to sew in one color, but if I don't, I want to be sure that that turns off and my machine will prompt me to change thread color when I need to. Next, I've got a rabbit, and I, I like to turn that, that on just for a little extra speed boost if I am confident in my design and I'm confident in my thread and I know I'm getting good results. When I turn that on, it now only will take 22 minutes. But again, I want to be careful that I'm not using that if it's a dense design or something where my machine is really doing a lot of work. I want to let it take its time and just stitch out exactly how it needs to. So we're about ready to stitch. Once you have everything set up, you've got your 40 weight thread up top, you've got your 60 weight thread down below, you have your fabric hooped up, you've edited your design, you've looked at the colors, let's get ready to stitch. And to do that, we just press and hold our green go button, it wakes up, and it starts to sew. Oh no! We have a thread break! <laughs> This will happen sometimes, and it is nothing to be alarmed by. When I have a thread break, my machine's going to tell me, hey, you probably aren't threaded up above anymore because our thread broke. So I can X out of this menu. Obviously, the first thing that I want to do is I want to re-thread the machine. If there was a jam or something like that, I want to take out my bobbin, clean out behind my hook, make sure it's got oil, make sure my machine from a hardware perspective is running smoothly. But once I'm re-threaded, I probably have gone about 15 or 20 stitches past where the thread actually ran out. So I'm going to need to go back in time. I want to make sure that I have a really smooth embroidery and that no one can ever tell that I broke a thread here. So to do that, my machine's going to give me this menu. This is my little S with an X. That's my stitch broke, my thread broke icon. And I see two different sides to this image. On the left, I have my whole design, and this crosshair, this bullseye, is where my needle is right now. On the right-hand side, I have a zoom-in close-up of every single stitch that it's doing. So I can use my top knob to go backwards. I'm going to the left. I'm going backwards about one stitch at a time. Or if I broke a thread way back or I need to go back for some reason or another, my bottom knob is going to go back about 15 or 20 stitches at a time. I broke this thread right at the beginning because I wanted to show you, but I can also jump forward. And you can see I'm jumping forward and I'm jumping all over this design um, just really quickly with this bottom knob. If I touch this yellow, it's going to go back to the, the exact stitch that the machine recognized we broke that thread on. So I'm here and I want to go backwards again about 15 stitches. I can look at my needle as I'm going, and this is another time I might use my hand wheel to lower the needle down to make sure that I'm back, again, about you know 10 or 15 stitches behind where my thread broke so that I'm going to get a nice coverage of those stitches. Once I'm on the right stitch that I want to start on, all I do is I hit the go button again, and my machine's going to start stitching and take off where it left off. When my machine is stitching, it's going to tell me what stitch number it's on and how many stitches are left to go. It's going to tell me how much time is left and some other nice things um, that I can really track my progress with. On this screen, if I've stopped my embroidery, it's going to still tell me what the total time is that I have left in my design and how much time I have left on just this color. Once our embroidery is done, the machine is going to take us to our embroidery finish page. If you are on a machine that has endless embroidery as an option, so the 590, 790, 500, 700, or the 880, you're actually going to have two different options. You want to select the waving, waving the, the finish line flag. But here we're just going to hit the green check and it's going to take us back into our stitch out page. This is a little bit different design because I wanted to actually stitch out one. Um, so it didn't take quite as long to do this one than it did to do the tree and the initials. So now is a good time, if you wanted to go back to sewing, to go into your hoop menu and go to park that embroidery module. It's going to show us the animation of removing the hoop. So go ahead and take your hoop off, and then it's going to say, hey, I'm going to move my arm now. So make sure you don't have your coffee sitting right next to the machine. And hit that check, and the embroidery arm is going to go park on the far left so you can switch over to sewing 
You don't even have to take the module off. You certainly can, but you don't need to. When I go home and go to sewing, if I'm on a five or a seven series, it will remind me to bring up my feed dogs so that I can go back to sewing on the, on the sewing side of things. So those are the basics. We went through a lot of detail on editing and kind of how to adjust your embroidery designs, but what I would really recommend is for you to get out your machine and just start stitching. There really is no other way to do it but to start practicing. So I encourage you not to be afraid of your machine. Just get the module on, get some fabric and stabilizer hooped up, and start sewing. Ask any questions that you need. There are tons of experts out there, but this at least will get you started on your path to embroidery.